Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran, and it feels a little bit weird, but in this video, we'll actually be talking about Battle for Azeroth. With how much stuff there's been going on in the Alpha, I felt compelled to want to cover it, because, well, one, it's fun. Second, everything is new and exciting. But in today's video, we will be talking about some of the massive changes that happened with Battle for Azeroth, particularly in the PvP department. We all knew that the new corruption vendor was going to unleash a havoc on the general community and it hit us in weird ways and Blizzard is doing some massive nerfs for PvP. So if you are someone who likes to queue arenas trying to be competitive, these changes might affect you. So I wanted to cover these changes as of recently. The changes that happened to the game recently we'll be taking a look at in chronological order. All the different changes that Blizzard has implemented and how they'll affect the gameplay. The first change we've had to take a look at was the PvP change with versatility corruption. From corruptions we have a variety of different corruptions. Some fire stars at enemies or massive laser beams to wipe out everything in front of us. But then some of the more tame and consistent corruptions are the ones that simply increase our secondary stats. And these have been extremely effective for a variety of classes. From fire mages stacking mastery amps, increasing the fire damage to the point of melting point. Or destruction warlocks stacking so much haste corruption that it allows them to blast out rapid fire chaos builds back to back without remorse. With the corruption of gushing nerves, get a nerf for PvP, which allowed games to be a little bit faster, as this gushing would do so much of your damage just for being applied to an enemy. Everybody decided to swap out of gushing for a different corruption that's more useful for PvP, and a lot of players landed on versatility being the best. Versatility increases your overall class's damage, but also decreases how much damage things do to you. And with certain combinations like Conflict and Strife Essence, this can be useful to increase your defensive potential against certain classes. So versatility became the strongest corruption in PvP. So Blizzard nerf versatility amp, the corruption that increases overall versatility on your gear by 33%. So any corruption you're looking at like 12%, 9%, 6% increase, imagine it being cut by third and that's what you get to play with in PvP interactions. On top of this, Blizzard also changed the way the Reaping Flames interacts with enemies totems as well as pets. If you used to just execute a Death Knight's pet in order to create a very powerful version of Reaping Flames after landing that execute, you no longer can do that anymore. So you will have to use it on an enemy target, make sure you land that execute before you can get the value from that ability. They also changed Conflict and Strife, so the defensive bonus finally interacts with certain stuns that it previously didn't. Most of the stuns worked with this ability, but certain stuns like the Warrior Stormbolt or the Feral's Maim for some reason did not trigger it at all. So you could kind of avoid the defensive possibility of like a healer running Conflict and Strife for running a Feral or a Warrior, locking them down with that class and not having the enemy gain the defensive benefit. They also nerfed the Mistweavers and their Cocoon, particularly the PvP talent of Chrysalis, where Chrysalis used to reduce Cocoon's cooldown by 45 seconds, instead it is now 25 second reduction. Let's break this down. So with all the versatility amps, people were able to get head to toe gemmed and statted for as much versatility as well as an extra secondary stats, but prioritizing versatility, leaving them with passively 40, 50, and even 60% versa just for existing. This didn't account for other procs like Conflict and Strife Minor procking you up to 800 versatility or so, but now giga buffed by all those amps or lucid dream, trinkets, and other effects. Together that would be about, what, 70, 80, maybe even in some cases 90 or 100% versatility gains. That's 100% damage increase. And if you're running Conflict and Strife Major and you're a healer getting locked down by a rogue, upon rogue stunning you with a kidney shot, you now have 100% damage reduction. Unless you were stunned by a feral or a warrior, but now this completely changed. So this was a huge amount of versatility, so Blizzard wanted to tone it down. The question is though, is this too strong of a tone down? Because they did recently nerf gushing, in general, not just for PvP. And now gushing as a corruption is just not nearly as good. I mean, still decent, but when it comes to PvP, it's just no longer the meta anymore. And gushing really sped up games in very interesting ways where you could get through games faster rather than wait into dampener, which some people like, some people don't. So of course the question in everyone's minds was, how bad is this going to be? 
The other changes though, the Conflict and Strife now function with certain CC is going to make Conflict and Strife a little bit more consistent and certain classes won't have the advantage, but it also means that Conflict and Strife is now more consistent for healers to run, especially those healers with a lot of verse amps, so it makes it a little bit easier for those healers or certain classes that will utilize this defensively to gain quite a bit of value. The next change that happened recently with Conflict and Strife is now the defensive benefit of it is nerfed by 50%. So normally when you wear Conflict of Strife as a major and you get stunned by a class, the defensive benefit would double your versatility. Instead, now it's going to increase your versatility, the defensive portion, by 50%. So instead of doubling it, it's going to increase it, but not nearly by as much. So you won't have the same amount of versatility as you would as a defensive just for getting stunned in Conflict and Strife. This can affect a variety of classes, so if you're now a healer with a Conflict and Strife and now it can consistently work with a variety of classes, uh oh, now there's maybe too much consistency with it, so Blizzard is nerfing Conflict and Strife. Imagine being a healer and you feel like the only option you have to fight against rogues is to prevent yourself from being stun locked. As the rogue tries to go in and open on you and burst everything into you, Conflict and Strife would give you that safety net of, hey, at least I'm not going to immediately get melted in the opener. And now with this change, some people have gotten worried. Combine this together with the versatility amp nerf that a lot of healers have started spamming and now a question of whether versatility is the best stat to go for or not is again on everyone's minds just from a different perspective, more from a defensive perspective. What Conflict of Strife change and versatility change are going to do in particular is impact classes that use Conflict of Strife as a major essence offensively. Most classes will try to use Conflict and Strife against rogues, a variety of classes, just to gain a little bit extra defensive edge. But there are a few classes that actually use Conflict and Strife for PvP regularly because it gives them really good honor talents. Classes like Arms Warriors, Destruction Warlocks, which a lot of you guys love and some of you maybe even hate, as well as Windwalker Monks, another class that is a love-hate relationship with some of you guys. Those are the three classes that are the most popular from a DPS perspective that actually use Conflict and Strife offensively. For those classes, the versatility amps and the defensive free benefit that they get is actually going to be reduced. So monks, in a sense, for woodwalkers, are more susceptible and more susceptible to stuns now, but in some passion. They're not going to be completely open and naked out in the open, but they're not going to have like 80% defensive benefit from a rogue just throwing them into a stun. So that's going to be interesting. The community feedback to these changes have been a little bit mixed. Some players have said that this change is only going to buff Destruction Warlocks and Fire Mages, which are already obliterating players with g pies as well as Chaos Bolts. And most people said that they kind of need all that versatility in order to survive a single Chaos Bolt to the face. On the other hand, some people have said that this change is, going, is only going to benefit classes that have rogues, classes that like to stun lock a target to infinity. Since Conflict and Strike Defensive isn't going to be quite as effective, it is going to, in a sense, make it harder for those healers to survive rogue-based comps. Something like a rogue and a mage put together could be quite deadly. Or a rogue and Destro Warlock at this point. I think Destro and Mage could be interchangeable since they're both super good as a caster. But also arose a different question. I know everybody's flustered, but should we still continue to stack versatility throughout all of this? And I think the answer is still yes. Some people have speculated in terms of the gushing nerf change compared to the versatility change. Versatility is still a really good stat. Blizzard is trying to control how it interacts only in PvP. I don't think people are going to be swapping to a haste only build, mastery or crit only unless maybe your class has some play to it, but most classes enjoy and get the most value from versatility. So it's simply Blizzard just trying to control just how much defensive value players have. You don't want to slow the games down until it's really super high dampening, but you also don't want to be having everybody running around with gushing wounds obliterating each other within seconds either. So there's got to be a nice middle ground for it. But it looks like versatility still might be the best stat to stack in the end. I guess only time will tell, but we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I guess we'll have to wait and see if anybody will try weird haste heavy builds, mastery heavy builds, crit heavy builds, or whatever you name it. And we'll just have to see where things go from here. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really do appreciate you. Let me know your thoughts about these controversial changes recently with Blizzard. And I'll see all of you guys in another video.